What's up, guys? Before getting into another edition of Pro Pels Talk, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're going to talk about what CJ said on his podcast and why I think it's a positive for this team moving forward. Let's get into the show. Pro Pels Talk and Boot Crew Media, of course, sponsored by the Birdsaw Law Firm. The official injury lawyers of Boot Crew Media, located in 918 Poyser Street by the Superdome. Give them a call at 504. 524-5413 523-5413 if you or someone you know has been involved in an accident, the Birdsaw Law Firm, the official injury lawyers of Boot Crew Media. We're going to talk about CJ McCollum and what he said on the podcast today. Um, seen a lot of mixed reviews. Uh, I've seen a lot of people like it. I've seen a lot of people call it corny and selfish. And why is CJ saying this and why is he saying that? I'll admit I've been very hard on CJ. Um I knew he was dealing with a thumb issue. I didn't know it was a torn UCL, but it was a torn UCL in his thumb. You could tell with his guard and that it was clearly, it was clearly um, bothering him throughout the year. Did not know about the torn labrum. Um, And he has talked lately a lot about playing through injuries. And there was a message after the post game uh, loss to the thunder. And a lot of people thought it was towards Zion Williamson about playing injured and being available and things like that. And that was the first time I felt like, Zion Williamson once again had been called out in public because if you flash back last, you know, a year ago when CJ got here, uh, if you don't remember when CJ got traded here, he went on national TV during the all-star break and called out Zion Williamson for not even returning or his call or text message or whatever. And his whole storm just happened that Zion Williamson selfish JJ Reddick came out. He's not that great of a teammate, things like that. Next couple of days, Zion responded. They all made up things like that. They move forward. I think CJ's doing it again. And I'm going to read a quote uh, from what he said on his podcast. It said, um, sorry, I'm pulling it up right now, but he's talking about, it's hard to be successful as an organization, as a team, when you got guys in and out of the lineup, you got guys in and out of practice, you got coaching staff, not sure who's going to play each night. It puts a lot of strain on the organization and players who also have to play more minutes. CJ also talks about how he played through injury with a torn UCL in his thumb, torn labrum for 30 something games. I'm sorry, not the torn UCL in his thumb. He had played for 36 games. Uh, I don't know when the torn labrum happened, but he also mentions that in the podcast. And some people think that this is selfish and corny. To be honest, I, I personally like it because we haven't had a guy like that. Um, of CJ standard call people out and, and and expect a certain standard over these last few podcasts. We've talked about accountability, right? we talked about accountability with Zion Williamson, accountability with the franchise um, accountability with, with injury reports and so on and so forth. This is the first time I've seen someone be like, yo, like we got to change this up. I'm going to start holding accountable. I think CJ setting the tone for the off season that this is not acceptable. And the crazy part is, is that he even mentions it. This team still won 40, what is it, 42 games? They still won 42 games. And he mentions, name a team with other two all-NBA talents that are going to win 42 games. And why I love that comment is because there is talent on this team. And he mentions about windows. And he also talks about that this was a wake-up call. And I think that we got so comfortable last year Last year was was an awesome story. It was a fun team. You didn't expect to be there after starting off one and twelve, one and thirteen, whatever it was. Taking the Suns to six games, he he even says that he should have taken the Suns to seven games. That was awesome. This year came in with expectations, and you just saw a roller coaster. Right? We got off to a great start. We beat the hell out of Brooklyn. Beat Charlotte. Then you get injured against Charlotte. Uh, then you get injured, injured against Utah. Right? Zion goes down with the tailbone. I think Herb hurts his knee. Then Brandon starts, you know, Brandon goes out for an extended period of time. You see Zion Williamson, CJ. Zion Williamson, one seed through January, whatever it was. They were even a three seed going into February. And then Zion went out. And it just kind of started snowballing after that. Brandon kind of took some time to get back into shape, back into rhythm. And you just kind of went up and down, up and down. Then you had the whole Zion Williamson thing. And what I... What I loved about what CJ said and why I like it is that I think that he's trying to set a standard and trying to hold everybody accountable. And 
if you think about it, dating back to when David Griffin got here, we've never really had a vocal leader, right? Like JJ was like, eh. Derek Favors was kind of a mute. Steven Adams, like a nice guy, but not like a vocal leader. Uh, you know, Alvin Gentry, he was on the way out. Then you had Sam Van Gundy that pandemic year, and he called out players and it, it, it wasn't received well, right? And so then in comes Willie Green. Willie Green's a guy that won't call you out. He's going to call you up. So you're never going to see him call out players, especially in post game, whatever post game conferences. What CJ is doing is what every coach loves. And he is a player holding other players accountable. Now, the thing that we have to see is how are other players going to receive this? And that's, you know, that's the risk that I think CJ is willing to take. He talks about, um, you know, that this was a wake up call and that um, they blew an opportunity. And that's why he played hurt because he values each season. And you have to remember that this team is still very young. Zion's 22, Moran's about to turn 26, Jose Alvarado's young, Herb Jones young, Trey Murphy young, Dyson Daniels young, Kyra Lewis young. I You don't really have a lot of veterans. So what I love about CJ is that he is trying to send a message that these, this is, like, these next couple of years should be our years. This is our window of opportunity right here, and we can't just be wasting years. And I'm going to end it with this because he says this. I did everything I could. I prepared mentally and physically. I ate how I was supposed to eat. I slept how I was supposed to sleep. I exercised properly and I did play hurt because I know this game doesn't last forever. And dating back, I'm just trying to think of somebody that's ever really said that being here for even from the horns to the Pelicans, right? A veteran like that. Um, And for people to say it's corny and like this and like, I don't think that's not corny to me. Like to me, it's like leadership. Like if I want to seem like, damn, Maybe we do have like a special thing here. Maybe we have a really good opportunity. Maybe we should be taking this seriously. Maybe we should be doing everything we can to be out there every single night. Because what CJ McComb did, even though I was very hard on him this year, he showed up every night. Jonas Valanciunas showed up every night. Herb Jones showed up, tried, showed up every night. Trey Murphy showed up every night. I think Christian Clark came out with like games played this year. And, like you saw like the main four guys that like showed up every night. I'm not saying that Brandon Zion no. But I think it's a wake-up call to say, like, hey, this we have an opportunity here, and we need to take full advantage of it. And so I'm interested to see, moving forward, how players respond. Because I think C.J. McCollum's setting a tone for the offseason that this is that losing in the play-in game at home is not acceptable. And to only get 27 games out of Zion Williamson in his last two years, not acceptable. Things need to change. You're a $200 million man. You're five years into the league now. You're not a kid. You're a grown man. We need you. We need you out there. Do whatever you can to be out there. Either you're with us or you're not. And that's that's the message that I'm getting from CJ. So I love the leadership. Now, how do we respond is the question. Because, because I think that moving forward, I'm interested to see what David Griffin said, because you've now heard David Griffin talk about, I'm a, like, as a fan, you should be disappointed. You should be pissed off, things like that. We know what the problem is. Okay. Let's see it. Let's see what you had this offseason because it's interesting because you, you still have to make a decision about Jonas Valanciunas because, I, I mean, we all think well, he's not going to be on this team next year. You have Trey Murphy, who's going to be a star. You have Herb Jones, solid foundation, great defensive player. He's caught a nice little groove there at the end of the year. Um, Jose Alvarado coming off injury. He should help back out. Larry Nance will be healthy again. CJ McCollum should probably be healthy again. I, this team's talented enough. But I think everyone's tired of talking about like, oh, what's the CJ Brandon Zion going to look like? Well, we need to see it and things need to change. So I actually like the way CJ McCollum has been acting over these last couple of weeks. And I commend him for trying to at least be a leader and be vocal about it, because I think it's very important that if you are vocal and you're loud about it and you talk about it, that wakes people up. And I, I'm just interested to see how Zion responds, because a lot of people think that this message directly towards Zion. All right, let's say you respond because you're going into your second your, your second contract in your first year and you have to start playing like an all-NBA player, like a max player, like a franchise player. And if you're not, you're going to get called out. It's as simple as that. So I personally, I liked it. Um, I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts in the comments. I'll try to respond to everybody I can. Once again, presented by the Birdsall Law Firm. Uh, we'll have the Sunday night show uh, this week. 
but I wanted to come on here. Uh, other guys couldn't do it tonight. They're, uh, they're busy, but uh, I wanted to come on here and talk about CJ. Cause I do want to talk about, or I wanted to talk about that. I, that I, I like his leadership. I like that he's like trying to like change and, and set a standard. That's what I like. I want, I, I want a certain standard that we're, we're expected to win and expectations need to be met. Um, so I love it. Presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of Boot Crew Media and the NBA. Like, comment, subscribe. Love to hear your thoughts. Talk to y'all later.